Pennsylvania is one of just six states that has one Republican and one Democratic senator. All the rest of the states either have two Democrats or two Republicans. And I think we like it that way. We like to uh, mix it up. The race for the United States Senate in Pennsylvania between John Fetterman and Dr. Oz has generated more twists and turns than almost any other in America's midterm. Today, we hear from Dennis Owens, the legendary broadcaster and one of the deans of the Pennsylvania Media Corps, who's going to moderate the one and only debate between Fetterman and Oz. Here from Ballard Studios, it's 13th and Park. The future doesn't belong to the faint party. There is not a liberal America and a conservative America. There is the United States of America. We will make America strong again. We will get through this together. I can hear you. The rest of the world hears you. And the people who knock these buildings down will hear all of us soon. Dennis Owens is one of the most respected television journalists in Pennsylvania. A Philadelphia native and graduate of LaSalle University, Owens was a former sportscaster turned veteran newscaster known for his warm persona and sharp reporting. Nominated for more than 70 local Emmy Awards and given the Edward R. Murrow Award for the work he'd done in the field. He is also the host and producer of This Week in Pennsylvania, which is must viewing for every person in and beyond government and politics in the state of Pennsylvania. But he does have one thing in his bio, his background, that should concern all of us. He likes to root for the underdog. Case in point, he's a Phillies fan. Dennis, well, welcome to the show. Well, let me just say, I got to add to my bio, I was at the Phillies clinching game Saturday against the Atlanta Braves, and it was the greatest uh. live sporting event I've ever been to. It was a beautiful day. The fans were great. Philadelphia gets a bad reputation, gets a bad rap. Uh, their sports fans do, but it was just a wonderful day, perfect situation, and it's go Phillies. We're not so much underdog. Our football team's undefeated as well. I know. What is going on in Philadelphia? Usually there's Something a lot the of great – Usually, I mean, the sports <laughs> – as you know, the sports shows, the sports radio shows in particular in Philly are, are rife with, let's say, passion. Yeah. But now you're winning all, all across the board. What are they going to be beefing about? It's an embarrassment of riches. I tweeted the other day, what alternate universe am I in? <laughs> well, yeah, and, and the Sixers looked like they were going to have a good season as well. Uh, if their team plays together well, that will be a contender too. So uh, kudos to you. And uh, it's been fun to watch the Phillies games, even as a longtime uh, Marlins fan. It's been great to see the elation and the crowds there. But uh, we're all also following the other big news coming out of Pennsylvania, uh, the big U.S. Senate race that could determine the control of the United States Senate. And this race features two really larger than life figures. And so one thing I'm curious about is, is there anything that's been underreported? Is there anything that that those of us who are following from outside the state uh, should know about that we probably don't know about? Well, underreported it, 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 and I'm going to say this in a facetious way, like, where do they actually stand on the issues? If you were watching TV <laughs> in Pennsylvania, and by the way, Justin, Adam, thanks for the question. Thanks for having me. If you were watching TV, it's all about attack ads, and then that Oz has killed puppies, then that Oz has 10 houses, uh, John Fetterman doesn't pay his taxes. Uh, th these are all the things that we're hearing, doesn't show up for work. Um, but substantive meat on where they are, the issues and what exactly they would do uh, if they were to win a, a seat in the United States Senate. Unfortunately, there's way too little reporting on that. And I'm, I'm hoping that on Tuesday night, as I moderate the only debate that we're going to have in this race uh, right here in Harrisburg Studios, uh, that we'll start to get into some substantive issues, because there's a few things, as you two guys know, uh, going on in the nation, inflation, the economy the border. There's all kinds of things to talk about. And, and for whatever reason, that's not really getting done. Um, and maybe one of the underreported, and I'm not giving you specifics about either guy, but underreported is the way campaigns are being done, the process of campaigning now. Uh, it used to be there'd be great access to all candidates. That's not quite so much the deal. It used to be there'd be several debates, especially on big races like this. That's no longer the deal. And that's not just a Pennsylvania thing. As you look across the landscape, there's more and more people saying we don't want to debate. And I don't think that's good uh, uh, 
for I don't think that's good for democracy. I think we need to have somebody stand there, try to answer questions and voters can look at the two guys or women, how they answer the question and 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 judge whether that, that person has won their vote or not. Let's project ourselves into the future a little bit and start looking back. Let's say that John Fetterman wins. What one thing do you think will prevail over perhaps the counter arguments that Dr. Oz has presented? Then we'll turn the question around. If Dr. Oz wins, what one thing do you think will help drive his success? Well, if John Fetterman wins, it's going to be because he was a a lieutenant governor here, Mm -hmm. uh, has been in Pennsylvania, has developed a bit of a name. He he has a bit of a national following, too. Um, And I'm not so sure uh, Oz's residency. There's some things uh, with Oz that aren't connecting with some people. Now, we still have a couple of weeks uh, because you guys cover the nation, right? We're expecting a quote unquote red wave. Mm -hmm. And that red wave is apparently possibly going to miss Pennsylvania, at least if in the two biggest races, if you believe the polls. The polls right now on the governor's race have the attorney general, Democrat Josh Shapiro, way up on Doug Mastriano and, and Fetterman leading narrowly and seem to be narrowing by the day. So John Fetterman is kind of a, a known quantity to a lot of people. Um, it'll be interesting to, if he loses I think his health issue is is an issue. He mm-hmm. had a stroke uh, right before the primary election. Um, I don't know how many Republicans he's getting to cross over and vote for him. Not sure about that. Uh, Oz is uh, obviously a household name. Talk about a household name. He was on people's in people's homes uh, for a long, long time mm-hmm. on television. It'll be interesting to see. He is from New Jersey, although he tries to downplay that. That still does matter uh, for some people. And he doesn't seem, I, I, do you remember when Donald Trump came down the escalator in what, 2015? Oh yeah. You may have a lot of conservative Republican friends and they just didn't trust it. Now he went on to win an election. So they jumped on board the bandwagon. But I think I feel that same uneasiness toward a guy like Oz in the Republic conservative Republican quarters. They're just not quite sure what to make of him, but if their choice is him, and John Fetterman, who is clearly a progressive Democrat, how many of them will actually go pull the lever for Oz? How many of them will show up? How many of them won't show up? Has this been nationalized at all, this campaign? I mean, every issue you're talking about is very specific, it sounds like, to the candidate, uh, which is uh, somewhat unusual in a day where it seems like parties and partisan politics seem to trump personality. But not here. It seems like these two have successfully broken through that barrier. And it, it appears to me to this point that it's been a referendum on each one of them. Does that change at all, perhaps, when we get closer to Election Day? It's funny you say that. So let me back up. So this very day that we're taping this, Joe Biden will be in Pennsylvania twice. He's in Pittsburgh right now, and he'll be in Philadelphia later. Uh, John Fetterman was with him in Pittsburgh, and I do want to note he was wearing a suit as opposed to uh, uh, last January when the president came and he had a hoodie and, and, and basketball shorts on uh, to meet him. And that's part of his brand, by the way. Um, it, you know, it is a national office. There's lots of national money pouring in here on both sides. They want that seat, uh, that seat, uh, as was mentioned a moment ago. Uh, could determine the balance of power in the U.S. Senate in Washington, D.C. Uh, hundreds of millions of dollars are going to be sent. When, when the smoke clears, it's hundreds of millions of dollars are going to be spent uh, on this race. But at the end of the day, it's Pennsylvanians that have to make the choice of, of, of who to vote for. And so uh, it, it's going to be interesting. And you, you just mentioned, you know, things right up until the moment of the election, things can happen. We're working on the debate. And sometimes we like to, you know, if there's a current event, that happens, something real timely. We like to kind of lead the debate with that. And I was saying to some producers, I can't tell you what is going to happen, but I can tell you that something is going to happen. (laughs) Well, you know, a lot of us followed what happened from outside Pennsylvania, followed what happened after the 2020 election. Uh, Obviously, there were some who uh, had questions about the ultimate outcome there. And that leads us to wonder uh, if we have another very close race, which this, this Senate race very well could be, uh, what is the level of confidence in the voting process and the procedures and the reporting of the results that will come on election night and possibly after election night that the results of the election will be 
perceived as being uh, real and, and truthful? So two things. Yes, you're correct. There were doubts uh, cast. Um, much of it about mail-in ballots, which in Pennsylvania was brand new in 2020. That is no excuse mail-in balloting. Prior, you could get a mail-in ballot if you're in the military. You're going to be away on business or for specific reasons. And I think there might have been 50, 60,000 mail-in ballots statewide. Now we're talking millions of ballots statewide. There are some Republicans that still don't believe that mail-in ballots are constitutional in Pennsylvania, shouldn't exist. I will say this, and it may sound editorializing, but hey, I'm talking to you too, so we'll editorialize for a minute. <laughs> a pox on everyone's house because we have not changed the law from the law that everybody's been screaming about since 2020. It's now 2022. They know a couple of the problems and how to fix them and gridlock at the state level. The Republican-controlled legislature and the Democratic governor have not been able to come to agreement Every county is asking for what's called pre-canvassing. I don't want to take you down the, the, mm -hmm. the, the process rabbit hole here, but the bottom line is pre-canvassing allows you to open the envelopes and put them into the machine, not count them, just get them ready to be counted. We can't do that until 7 a.m. on election day, meaning the 67 counties are holding two elections. You got to count those mail-ins and you got to hold an in-person election. Wow. Don't expect election night for us to have results. It will be better this year because they did pass one law that gave counties extra money. And in exchange for that extra money, their staff has to stay there and count those not leave until all of the mail-in ballots are counted. So what was a week, if you remember in, 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 uh, in 20, it was a week before Pennsylvania declared, they're now saying probably a couple of days. So it won't be as long, a little better, but a pox on all their houses for not fixing what everyone is asking them to fix. And that kind of got caught up in a political fight. And so, it, it, it is very frustrating to sit on the outside and watch and go, we know this needs to be done, but because we have political differences, we're not going to just get it done. Well, you know, coming from Florida, as Justin and I do, we're, we're no stranger to close elections and debates about political election day processes, you know, going back to 2000. Yes. But in Florida, what happened after 2000 is they did dramatic reforms because they didn't want to go down that path again. In uh, Georgia, they passed massive reform also, yeah. uh, which was somewhat controversial. But you're saying in Pennsylvania, they did very little to change the rules, so to speak, uh, for elections from 2020 to today. And 2020, part of the problem was it was a brand new system, right? They're brand new. They never had that, that number of mail-in ballots before, and now they do. Um, as for uh, do we trust everything? I mean, let's be honest. There's some Republicans running around there saying – you know, that it wasn't on the up and up. They're still saying that, even though there's no evidence to support what they're saying. And look, there's anecdotal, you know, uh, let's be clear. Elections are done twice a year and they're largely done by volunteers, right? right? Anecdotally, there's gonna be a problem here, a problem there. That's different than a wholesale attempt to steal an election from one person and give it to another. And I think people are co uh, inflating or conflating the two things. Okay, so there's an occasional thing over here that that equals fraud. The other thing that's going on right here, not to get into the crazy processes thing, but a number of outside groups are sending mail-in ballot applications to all kinds of voters are hoping to get them signed up. And some people could get five or six applications in the mail. And they think, oh, I got five or six ballots in the mail. No, you got an application. You will only get one per customer when it comes to a ballot. The counties are like, we've got that buttoned up, but it leads to the thought that something is wrong. The poll shows John Fetterman and Mehmet Oz are in a statistical tie. Three weeks before the election and a very small number of voters have yet to decide, only about 4%. Real Clear Politics rates this race as a toss up. What is it that's so unique and special about Pennsylvania and the people of Pennsylvania that makes any political race there not only worth watching, but worth understanding more deeply as a different kind of idea than other states across the land. First of all, I love Pennsylvania. It's a great place to be a political reporter. And the fact of the matter is Pennsylvania is not one state. Actually, Florida has a little bit of this too. Mm -hmm. It's really like five states. So you got Philadelphia. And even Philadelphia, you can just say Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, big cities. Yes, but those two are completely different too. Pittsburgh, that area, which is a little more uh, uh, moderate, uh, Democrat, moderate thing and, and you got more progressives in Philadelphia, but then you got a vast rural area. You've got everything from the farmland to the heartland. And, you know, we're a purple people. 
That's, that's, I think that's pretty much what we are. Pennsylvania is one of just six states that has one Republican and one Democratic senator. All the rest of the states either have two Democrats or two Republicans. And I think we like it that way. We like to uh, mix it up uh, often as far as the, the, the party that is in power, except for our state legislature, which has been Republican dominated for 30 years. So, you know, it's just, it's just it is a, a unique place. It is a purple place. And I, and I do think, you know, Pennsylvanians like the Obama, Pennsylvania, the number of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania went for Trump, you know, the last two elections, Donald Trump could claim victory when Pennsylvania's tally was counted and he had won. Joe Biden could claim victory when Pennsylvania's tally finally was done and he could claim victory. He, he won the president. Pennsylvania has put the last two presidents over the top. And but think about that swing too. you know, from Obama to Trump to Biden, that's where, that's where Pennsylvania has gone. And uh, as I said, it's multiple states in one. It is a wonderful place. And I think the people are pretty pragmatic, too. I think they, I think the people get it. And that means not being beholden to one party or another. That's, I think, one thing that is so true, again, about Florida, about Pennsylvania. You've got lots of different constituencies within the state, same state. The final question I wanted to ask you is, uh, you know, the debate, and you're the moderator for the debate. It's the only debate between the two cans. The eyes of the state and obviously the eyes of the country will be on this debate. What can you share with us about just the process that you go through to prepare for such a significant responsibility in our democracy? So my parent company is called Nextar. They're the largest owner of local news stations in America, and they actually have their own national network called News Nation. Chris Cuomo just went there. You may have seen that. Ashley Banfield is there. Dan Abrams is there. Uh, and this debate will be aired on all of those stations. It will be aired on News Nation, I should say. As far as the process, I literally took the 20 minutes to talk to you guys. We have a number of corporate people here. Uh, we are going through editorial. And when I tell you there's 13 people around a, a, a table parsing every comma and, and how we ask it, making sure it's not partisan, that it's fair, but tough. Um, those are the, that's what we're aiming for. This debate will be a little different, just so everybody knows. We have two 70-inch monitors. There will be closed captioning for John Fetterman. And I did a, an interview with him. He used his system on his end two weeks ago. It was via Zoom. And I was impressed with, you, you expect there would be a pregnant pause. There wasn't. He was reading my question and answering almost in real time. So we've got a closed captioning system for him uh, so that he can read and respond. Because uh, based on the issue with his stroke, it's not that he has a little difficulty processing from the ear to the brain. But if he can see the words, it just uh, gets a better response. So it's going to be interesting to see what, you know, what his health is. We've got to you know, kind of prepare for that uh, and, and think about that. Uh, so. And, and that's kind of like an overarching story. I think some people just want to get the measure of the man. They like John Fetterman, but boy, what what toll did this stroke take on him? Right. And then I also want to think people want to see Dr. Oz. Now, listen, it's daunting. If you're John Fetterman, it's a daunting thing that, yeah, yes, he had a stroke, but you're now going to go stand on a stage opposite a guy who's been on a stage successfully for the last you know, two decades. That can't be an easy thought. You know Oz is going to have glib things to say, and he's not going to be... Uh, um, distracted by the lights and the cameras and the microphones. Right. So that's got to be a, a daunting thing. But I think in these debates, sometimes it's not necessarily what they say or how they say it, how they look, how they appear. You know, there's all of that stuff. So I'm, I'm very excited. And unfortunately, they haven't been on a stage together in, 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 in you know, gone head to head. And here's why, here's what I stand for. And here's why what you say is not right. You know, that kind, there's not been the exchange that we normally get with candidates. So I'm excited to see it. Well, I can tell you with great confidence, uh, you can expect great ratings on this debate well, because everybody totally. wants in for all the reasons you just talked about. Dennis, thank you so much for spending time with us. Uh, your service and in de in delivering information uh, objectively to the people of Pennsylvania for a long period of time is has been critical. And I think in trying to help restore that lost confidence, you might say, in democracy and in elections. We applaud you for that. We wish you the best of luck on Tuesday. Uh, and of course, uh, given your Phillies fandom, uh, we, <laughs> we, we keep our fingers crossed for them as well. Uh, can, I, can I tell you this? Here's one, one bugaboo. Uh -oh. 
if there is a game seven of the NLCS, Uh-oh. it falls on my debate night. <laughs> so oh, I'm no. holding for the Phillies in six. Now, so you, that means you're going to have a monitor in front of your monitor well, with a game on. Is that what you're telling us? Well, I think there's A, that, but B, how many people <laughs> are we going to lose that would otherwise watch our debate? Go Phillies. Hey, gentlemen, folks, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Dennis. Thank Good you. luck to you. Uh, Take care. Bye-bye. This is an economic and health crisis. A doctor can help fix it. I'll keep us safe, cut your taxes, and protect our jobs. I'm Dr. Oz. I approve this message. An offensive lineman by the name of John Fetterman forged his values. Work over glory. We need him in the Senate to block bad trade deals, to stop members of Congress from trading stocks, and fight to make stuff here again. The ads alone, Justin, tell you what kind of race this is. It is wild. And when Dennis said, I still don't know what the lead question is going to be, because something probably is going to happen between now and that debate a couple of days from now, as we're recording, uh, heaven knows, but it's going to be something and it's going to probably be very colorful and maybe determinative of fate. It's it's remarkable. There have been so many twists and turns uh, in this state in the Senate race, uh, very similar to the Georgia Senate race. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, what a what a remarkable uh, opportunity! This will be the only one for both uh, those candidates to stay on the stage and to be asked questions. And I was really interested to learn more about his process and uh, really like to get the behind the curtains look at the process that he and his colleagues at his news organization are going through to ask questions, to make sure they're not partisan. And to your point, Adam, about the ads, he said that all the ads are about every issue under the sun, except the actual issues of the country, (laughs) the most important issues of the country. It's all these sideshows that are going on on both sides. So I think the good thing is it sounds like the debate is going to actually focus on issues that voters say are the most important to them. Well, let's see if the two candidates stay to that script, right? (laughs) Because they may completely come off script. It's interesting. Obviously, John Fetterman's health issue is an issue uh, in this campaign, and that certainly is going to be the key uh, perspective a lot of voters are going to be looking for from him. In a way, I think that sets the bar lower for him. If he can clear that bar, I think it's a lower bar, as opposed to Dr. Oz, who is a television personality, uh, very uh, comfortable, facile with, with the medium. Maybe the bar for him is higher uh, than Fetterman, but he has to connect. See, John Fetterman is kind of a, a lunch bucket kind of Democrat. Uh, and there's a lot of appealing things about him. He dresses that way. His brand is built around that. Dr. Oz is different, but Dr. Oz, I think, connects uh, in a whole different way. But he has to connect with the people of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania as one of them. And I think that's going to be the one thing I'd most be looking for in that debate. Yeah. And to me, this is the flip. It's the reverse of what we saw in Georgia with the one single Mm -hmm. debate between Herschel Walker and Senator Warnock, Mm -hmm. where Herschel to me came across as more authentic and Senator Warnock came across as a Washington Senator, uh, very polished, very ready for television. And Herschel was not as polished. And so, but it came across as more authentic. So it's kind of interesting to see the dynamics reversed from we have in the state of Georgia. I think it's fair to say that if Pennsylvania goes Republican in the U.S. Senate race, it's probably the signal of a bit of a wave because among the the target races where both parties would concede it's a 50-50 coin flip as of now, that would probably be, be the one that would be the most telling in terms of which party fared better than the other. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, Pennsylvania has always voted, they always voted for the Democratic nominee for president since 1988, since George H.W. Bush beat Michael Dukakis until Donald Trump won it in 2016. It's a gettable state. Joe Biden uh, famously famously was born. He made sure that everyone knew that he was born uh, in Pennsylvania. So this is a, a, a pickup opportunity for the Democrats. Uh, they have their hopes staked on maintaining control and strengthening their control of the Senate based on picking up this opportunity in Pennsylvania. So um, for them, this is a bellwether uh, for sure of what's going to happen around the country. If Pennsylvania goes for the Republicans, don't be surprised if uh, you see Nevada and, and, and maybe New Hampshire and the state of Washington go for Republicans as well. 
Well, I know that Dennis Owens, more than anybody on earth, is rooting for the Phillies in six, as you said in the interview. Uh, go Godspeed, Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, I think the country really wants to see this debate, uh, as do the people of Pennsylvania. I hope they all tune into that, flush with victory from the Phillies having uh, won their series, uh, and that this is uh, going to be a very telling part of the midterm elections in America, one of many uh, that you and I uh, are going to be reporting on over the course of the next two weeks. Yeah, let's hope the results uh, are announced, as he said, within a couple of days. It was nice to hear that they did make that one change so we can get the result a little bit quicker. Yeah, so be- we'll see. Yeah, because if, if we start seeing those pictures that we saw before of Philadelphia, where people are being barred from seeing the, the counting, I think we're in not only for a long night, but maybe for a long rest of the year. From Ballard Studios, with another episode of 13th and Park.